Would you turn in your Bibles to the 16th chapter of Matthew? Matthew's Gospel, the 16th chapter. Reading from verse 24 through verse 26. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Will you pray with me? Speak, Lord, as only you can through the beautiful presence of your Spirit. Help us to understand what you have for us this morning. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. This morning I want to invite you to come on a journey with me. Because I'm not sure if what I have for you characterizes a a sermon that's neatly wrapped up. It has more to do with just thoughts that have been coming to me and making me think and ponder and engage with the scripture. And uh, so I want you to walk with me today. The words that grabbed me as I was going through this was, come after me. Come after me. If anyone wishes to come after me, they must do this. And I was reminded on a couple of occasions before when I have delineated the differences between being a believer and being a disciple and said that the two are not the same. You can be a believer and not be a disciple of Jesus. But you cannot be a disciple and not be a believer. A believer happens in a moment of time when you accept Jesus into your heart. Discipleship is the journey that we are on until we finally enter his presence. And one of the things that we looked at was that with believers, we hear Jesus saying, come unto me. But with disciples, we hear him say, come after me. Come unto me and come after me. And in this instance, Jesus is saying, if anyone will come after me, anyone, let's just take all of us in this room, if all of us would go after Jesus, if that's our decision today, then these three things must happen. There must be a denial, a death, and a following, and a purpose to follow. These three things must happen. If we want to be disciples of Jesus and come after him. I must confess that reading this verse makes me uncomfortable. Denying, picking up one's cross, these are all things that really try and steal my joy, isn't it? I love passages in the Bible that say, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. That's a passage that I can relate to. Boy, Jesus came that we may have life and have it in abundance. And then we come to passages like this that talk about denying oneself, picking up one's cross, and we say, oh my goodness, I think that's the wrong passage for me. Let me just skip on to the concordance. And yet it seems to me that Jesus was so serious when he was talking about it. 
that he said, if you want to come after me, then these are the things that must happen. Now, if you begin to follow through on that thought, and I can warn you it's going to get uncomfortable, then we need to ask ourselves, am I denying something in my life? Have I picked up my cross? Am I following him? Because if we are not, the answer to that is doubtful. Then it is doubtful that we are coming after him. Which would then place a big question mark on being his disciple. Which is why I said that it's an uncomfortable passage for us. Because the more you question it, the more you come up with answers that don't really make you feel good or make you feel like you're on a, on a good place, in a good place. What does it mean to deny or pick up one's cross? Sometimes we think that picking up our cross is, you know, having a strained relationship, that's the cross that we carry. We have a boss who's terrible with us, that's the cross that we, have, uh, that we carry. Or we have relationships that are gone sour and that's the cross that we carry. And that is so far from the truth. Those are not crosses, those are inconveniences that we have in life that are present for everybody. It's not the cross that Jesus is talking about. If we need to understand what he was talking about, we need to move back just a little bit and see the context. The context for this is actually starts from verse 21. It says this, From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone will come after me, do these three things. After that, after going through what happened with Peter, he turns to his disciples and said, here's a lesson that I want you to learn about denial, about picking up your cross and following me. What was it in that whole episode that Jesus modeled? Because he did model it. We see him denying something. We see him irrevocably from that point on moving towards Jerusalem. And we see him following what was God's will for him here on earth. He modeled it. He modeled what it was to be a true disciple of his father. Look at the first thing. He says that I must go to Jerusalem. I must suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Now move to the second verse, the next verse. Peter then took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Now just assume that the 23rd verse is not there. What's your immediate response to what Peter has said? You're going, wow, what a man. Isn't it? Incredible, Peter. What a way to take up for your master. Here's your master talking about going to Jerusalem. He says, you're not going to go. Not on my turf, not on, on my timeline. That's not going to happen to you. You're not going to have to suffer. You're not going to have to be ridiculed. That's not going to happen. And those are the type of people that we want all around us, isn't it? People who will come alongside, encourage us, and say when we talk about dark and dire things that are going to happen in our lives, who say, no, that will not happen. And we thrive in those kind of situations. Because we think this person cares so much for me that they're willing to say, no, this will not happen to you. Unfortunately, the 23rd verse follows. Where Jesus' harshest critique till now is, is sent towards Peter. Gone is the name Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. That's exactly what Jesus was denying. Jesus was modeling what it is to deny the praise and the well-being and, the, and, and people thinking that they're doing what ought to be done for you. And yet, it is not part of the will of God. It, it is to be able to deny that, however good and wholesome it looks. 
and to be able to say, but it doesn't align with the holy will of God, and I will deny it. Are you with me, beloved? Which asks the question for us, which begs the question, where in our lives, what are we denying ourselves? That have to do with kingdom purposes being thwarted. Where is denial in your life? When is the last time you said, I deny this? Because much as it seems like it's a good thing, it's good for me. I won't have to endure something. I won't have to go through something. I won't have to change my plans. It still doesn't line up with the will of God. And you were able to deny it. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. Pick up his cross. When you say pick up his cross, people in that century knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. Because every criminal who walked to their crucifixion picked up their cross and walked with it. The Romans had this as their ultimate act of uh, giving justice. That people were crucified. Historians say that around that period of time, there were some 6,000 crucifixions that happened. It was normal. Everybody knew when they saw a criminal walking with the cross, they knew he was walking to his crucifixion. So the disciples knew very well what Jesus was talking about when he said, if you want to come after me, then pick up your cross and follow me. Pick up your cross. What's symbolized in that? In picking up the cross, what was Jesus trying to symbolize to them also as he was going to Jerusalem? He said there's a father's plan that is in place. The father's plan is in place. And unless I die to myself and to my needs and my wants, which you'll see even surfaced at Gethsemane when he said, nevertheless not my will be done. Let this cup pass for me. But nevertheless not my will but thine be done. He struggled with it. God's plan of salvation for humanity was captured in Jesus walking towards Jerusalem. And for that, he had to die to every other thing that would try and get in the way. Which again raises the question for us, isn't it, beloved? What have we died to? What have we died to that is getting in the way of God's plan for us? Now, maybe you're sitting here and saying, but I really don't know what God's plan for me is. And that's often a legitimate place to be. But I say often because there are two ways of understanding God's plan. One is His general plan for us doesn't need anybody to tell us what it is. It's found right here in the Word. It's found right here in the Word of God. God's plan for us is found right here. How we need to walk, how we need to talk, what kind of behavior we need to have, what kind of attitude we need to have, what's the kind of person that I need to be as a disciple of Christ. We don't need anybody to tell us what that is. It's found here in Scripture. That's His plan for us. To be a disciple is clearly written out in His Word. And beloved, may I say this, that it is in being his disciple, in understanding exactly and following through, through on what he wants us to do, is when his particular plan for us gets unveiled. It's in that. It doesn't happen in limbo. It happens in our proximity with him, that we suddenly begin to realize, this is what God wants me to do. But his general plan is outlined for all of us. We never have to scratch our heads and say, I wonder what is God's plan for me? Now ask yourself, are you walking as a disciple of Jesus? Are you walking as a disciple of Jesus? Are you regularly putting to death the things that would thwart that particular plan of being a disciple of Jesus? I had many ouches when I was preparing this sermon. Because each time I thought about it, I thought, my goodness, there are so many things. There are so many things in my life that I've got to deal with that are not 
what a disciple of Jesus would model or should think or have. And then are we facing the path that God has called us to walk on and walking on it? Are we? Or have we just taken the first jump into salvation and then settled down and said, we'll just leave it now? As I was thinking about it, I felt the Lord saying, look back over your life. Look back over your life and ask yourself, was there a point further back when you love me more than you do today? Is there a point further back when you love Jesus more than you do today? Is there a point further back in your life when you had more zeal and fervor for him and his plans than you have today? And if the answer to that is yes, and somehow we're not denying ourselves, we're not picking up the crosses that we need to pick up and following after him. I, I don't have answers, beloved. I can't wrap this up and tell you, so, you know, this is what you do and this is what you do. You all know that. I know it. The question is, do we follow hard after him? Do we do exactly what we are meant to do? Jesus ends by saying, so what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? And the question we need to ask in that context is, have we gone after the world? Have we gone after worldly things? Fortune and fame or status and all of these things and forgotten what it is to be a son or a daughter of the Most High God. If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow. You know, beloved, I, my sense for us in this year is that God wants us lean and hungry for him. Lean and hungry for him because he wants to use us as salt and light in the various places that we walk from Monday through Saturday. Sheila and I spent some time just away praying. This is our 20th year and we were saying, Lord, what do you have for us? Even as we celebrate 20 years of God's faithfulness in, our, in the life of this church in April, we were praying and said, Lord, show us what is the way forward. And the church dispersed was what God placed upon our hearts. The church dispersed. That we are not church inside church, but we are church in the midst of community. Do you see the difference? That's where salt and light are needed. And God wants us hungry to be his disciples in that kind of a situation. Not to get complacent, but to constantly ask ourselves, yesterday what did I deny that my old nature was trying to draw me back to? Yesterday, who did I say no to who was trying to draw me back into another plan that God doesn't have for me? What have I put to death in my life that I will not go back to? I will not. Those are the kinds of questions that we need to be answering day in and day out as we faithfully keep our eyes on Him and follow hard after Him. I think that's the essence of of this whole passage, beloved. It makes us uncomfortable. And yet Jesus is saying, if anyone wants to come after me, let's stop and ask, do we want to come after him? Do we really want to come after him? If Jesus got in our face and said, do you want to come after me, Cecil? What would I say? And that's exactly what he is doing. Right now, because these are his words. Any plan and purpose 
that is not God's is of the evil one. However good and noble it may look and sound. Which is why Jesus addressed Peter as Satan. And I, I think, beloved, the question for us to wrestle with, grapple with today, through this day, through the week, is how can I be a true disciple of Jesus? How can I bring honor to his name? Can I answer this question? I am a Christian. Yes, I've accepted Jesus as my Savior, but I'm walking as a disciple of Jesus. I'm walking as a disciple of Jesus. And I will deny myself. I will pick up those crosses that I need to pick up. And I will keep my eyes single-mindedly focused on Him. That, I believe, is, is what God would have us think about, meditate on, and then take very conscious, intentional decisions about our own lives. I guess He would move us away from a sense of complacency. He would push us. He would say, don't settle there. Don't settle there. That's not the place for you. I want you in a place where every will and purpose of mine is fulfilled in your life. God has a blueprint for us already in heaven. And I always think when I get to heaven, when I look at my blueprint, has my name Cecil on top of that, and I look at it and I see the blueprint, will I find that most of everything that God wanted me to do got done? Or will I look at a blueprint that has so many places where I didn't follow after Him? Is there joy in the midst of denying ourselves, taking up our cross, following Him? I think there is. Because there is always an inexpressible joy that comes when we are completely in the will of God. It's a joy that you and I have experienced before. And sometimes it comes fleetingly to us because we wander away. As we sang, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. But can we say now, here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for your courts above. Three questions. What are you denying or what ought you to be denying in your life today? Are you facing the road that God is placed before you? Now you're committed to following His plan for your life. If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. For what profit is there if you gain the whole world and end up losing your soul? How terrible, isn't it, beloved, that would be? How terrible. We carry these treasures that we think are so good and wonderful and yet moth and rust can finish them. But the eternal things which moth and rust cannot touch is what God is inviting us to be after. To be His disciple is the call for us today. Shall we pray together? <clears throat> Lord, how often we err, Master, in assuming plans that are more comfortable, more convenient, and yet have nothing to do with your holy plan for us. Lord, in these moments, would you 
Strip away those things, Master, that may cloud our judgment, that may prevent us from seeing clearly. And allow us to see those things that you have for us. Lord, show us those things that need to be denied today and every day. Show us those things that need to die, Master. And Lord, point us in the path that you want us to go on, to follow after you. Lord, that is our prayer this morning. Lord, we don't want to just go through the motions. We want to truly be your disciples and come after you. Help us, Master. We ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.